food chains, food webs, and energy pyramids. Energy moving from producers to primary consumers on to secondary consumers and so on is called a food chain. Food chains describe what eats what. For example, zooplankton may eat phytoplankton. Gizzard shad may eat zooplankton. And largemouth bass may eat gizzard shad. While such descriptions of energy flow through a community of plants and animals may sound pretty easy to understand, this is only a simplified version of how energy really moves through a community. Most animals have many sources of food at any point in time. Their food sources may vary by life stage, by their size, by the size of the prey, and by season of the year. Each food source may feed many different kinds of animals. To illustrate this, food web diagrams, such as shown here, show how different food chains are interconnected. Taking out any link in a food chain may upset the balance of the whole food, of, of the whole food web. An energy pyramid is another way to look at feeding relationships and energy flow through an ecosystem. Energy comes from the sun. The largest number of species and the greatest amount of available energy is in the producers that take the sun's energy and produce food. This forms the base of our energy pyramid. As we move up the pyramid, energy is transferred up to organisms at higher levels. Energy is also transferred out of the pyramid at each step, and fewer species and individuals can be supported. The smallest number of species and least amount of energy is in the carnivores and top predators. The pyramid not only shows us what eats what, but how much energy is available at each level in the environment. Now, some energy is lost at each step away from the source of energy, and the ultimate source of energy is the sun. The groups of organisms that occupy the same position in a food chain, such as the producers and consumers, are called trophic levels. Trophic levels describe the steps in the energy pyramid and the organism's roles at each level. Only a little of the sun's energy passage passes from one trophic level to the next. Animals lose energy doing tasks such as hunting and keeping their bodies warm. An example of lost energy happens when a whooping crane eats a blue crab. The crane gets any energy that's in the crab's body when it gets eaten, but the crane doesn't get the energy that the crab spent that day walking on the bottom and swimming around the wetland using its swimming legs before it was eaten. That energy is lost. An energy pyramid illustrates this lost energy by showing each higher trophic level having a smaller volume than the one below it. Most of the energy, the food energy, in a food chain is lost moving up each trophic level. For example, it takes about 3,200 pounds of microscopic plants to produce about 400 pounds of microscopic animals. These 400 pounds of microscopic animals can feed, oh, about 60 pounds of crayfish, snails, mussels, clams, and aquatic insects. Those animals may in turn be eaten by up to, oh, maybe eight to 10 pounds of, of bluegill. Eating eight to 10 pounds of bluegill will allow a largemouth bass to grow by only about one pound. An environment can support only a certain amount of life at each step in the energy pyramid. The higher up the energy pyramid an animal feeds, the fewer of this kind of animal the environment can support. Most energy, energy pyramids can continue for only about four or five trophic levels and they can support only a few top level consumers. In Texas reservoirs, for example, largemouth bass and striped bass often occupy the top level of the food chain. These top level predators are fewer in number than the smaller fish species, the invertebrates, 
or the aquatic plants that are in this ecosystem. In large aquatic ecosystems, such as the Gulf of Mexico, most of the energy in the system comes solely from within the system itself. In smaller systems, such as freshwater streams, particularly in the headwaters, most of the energy used in the ecosystem comes from plant and animal matter that falls into the water from the outside. This comes from the stream banks, from riparian vegetation, from things that get blown or thrown into the stream 